Hi, I'm Eileen Roach, founder of Designs and Machine Embroidery, and thank you for joining me today. We're going to talk all about getting a holiday stitching game plan. It's that time of year. You know, we're coming down the end. Now that Halloween is behind us, it's all about the Thanksgiving holiday and then Christmas or Hanukkah and New Year's. It's a very busy time of the year for people who like to make gifts and, you know, this year is no different than any other year. There might be someone on your list that you definitely want to make something for. So while we wait for everybody to kind well, not everybody, but while we wait for people to sign in, uh, if you would just tell us where you're watching from, that would be great. We'd love to uh, hear from you. And here's Diana Mullins Atkinson from uh, Illinois and Isabel Brian from France. Hello, Isabel. So lovely to have you here in Kathy Simpson in Florida. It's awesome. We're going to, you know, many of you may have already ordered your fall metallic, your King Star Quartet, but today we're going to kind of have a focus on holiday stitching. And so that will involve some other colors. And we have a fun announcement that we're going to announce well, a couple of them at the end of today's program. So Today's special is the Holiday Quartet, the King Star. Now, this is going to give you those luscious holiday colors of the red, green, silver, and gold. You know, King Star has three different golds. So the gold that was included in the Fall Quartet, King Star Quartet, is different than this gold. So if you are a lover of gold, don't think you're buying the same color, the same spool twice. It is a different gold. And if you ever tried to match gold, like maybe an accent on China or on a Christmas ornament or a military badge, you'll learn that there are lots of different shades of metallic gold. So best to stock up on all three when you can. Um, yeah, thanks for the comment about the earrings. Aren't they fun? They were stitched with King Star. Of course, the green was our exquisite 40 weight thread, but that gold band, absolutely was King Star, so dependable. So where do you start with holiday stitching game plan? You're gonna come up with your project selection. I have it listed first, but maybe it's not really the first thing because time's pretty important, but you should most certainly consider who's on your list and if any of them would appreciate a handmade gift because you may have noticed through the years that sometimes a handmade gift is not truly appreciated. So then you'll know in the future not to go to the trouble of making something for someone who doesn't really appreciate it. Maybe they'd rather have a tech gadget or sports equipment, something like that. And But for those who do appreciate a handmade gift, Consider what are their interests? You know, are they a sports fanatic, a baker, you know, a sewist, a quilter, an embroiderer? And keep those things in mind as you mull over what types of projects to make. Now, as you know, um, supplies are have been a challenge in many industries this year, and this holiday season is no different. So if you know what you need, whether it be thread or stabilizers, fabric, buttons, crystals, whatever notions you need that you're going to be using for your gift making, order them now, order them right now so you're not disappointed. And hopefully you already have a lot of them in, in, in your uh, embroidery studio. And as you make this list and as you think of the projects that you'd like to create for your uh, gift recipients, you have to have a reasonable expectation of what you can accomplish in the time that you can allot to this activity. Many of you work full-time jobs and you can't spend eight hours a day, you know, for the next four weeks making gifts. So don't worry about it. I've got some great ideas for fast and simple projects that, and actually many of them, you just hoop stabilizer, thread, press go and walk away. You'll see. Okay, then you have to get it done. So once you get your game plan, just start. Start where you can. Start with the supplies you have on hand so that you know you'll be able to finish in time. 
So why don't we head over to the overhead cam and take a look at the, some of the fun samples. We know lots of parties start with an invitation, right? So here is an invitation that is really fun for an ugly sweater contest. But not only is it fun, this little piece here becomes an ornament. You could even include, you know, a wire hanger to this and then maybe just a little tad of double stick tape to attach it to the invitation. And when your guest receives this um, in the mail, oh, they'll just be tickled to death with that and, and you know, use it on their tree. Okay, these fun embellishments are what my friend, Ayn McCarthy calls table scatter. She likes to make small lace elements and adorn her table, like in the center of the table, uh, around candlesticks and so forth with all of these little sprinkled items. So this is our King Star gold and the red. And of course, here's some silver. And you'll notice that there is King Star in the bobbin. So if you haven't tried using King Star in both the top and the bottom, then um, you should. So let's go ahead and, and we have a video to show you how easy it is to wind the King Star on the... three uh, bobbins full of the King Star thread, and then I'm all ready to roll. I know when I am actually stitching all these lace snowflakes, like I think I did these five in one hooping in a five by seven hoop. I used two layers of the Kings of our water soluble um, stabilizer, the, no, mm, the water soluble mesh type that just dissolves and oh, it's wonderful. So isn't that fun? That's table scatter. These same kind of elements can also be used as napkin rings, you know, to adorn a simple napkin ring. In fact, this is plastic wear. This is a paper napkin and a paper wrapping. And when I just add that snowflake to it, all of a sudden, my Christmas buffet is really elevated. Right? Wouldn't you agree? It's really a lovely way to do that. Now, if you want to step it up a notch and use cloth napkins, then you could go to the trouble of making it uh, a napkin ring that's a little bit more sophisticated. Here I've added jingle bells to the leaves, and the leaves are hand tacked to a band. So let me kind of show you how that works. I would hoop two layers of our water soluble stabilizer and stitch these four bands in the hoop. This was done in a five by seven hoop. This uh, setup, we have a loop at one end and kind of a, a knob, let's call it, at the other end. And when I rinse this away, I have um, a band like this. And I can then close it and, you know, insert that into the back so that it uh, forms a ring. And of course, this was hand tacked on. Super fast, really fun. That's a great gift for someone who loves to set a beautiful table. It doesn't take you a long time to make it, but it will, you know, it's a gift that they'll use Christmas after Christmas, right? Yeah. So let's see. What else do I have in store? I think that's kind of it for the table, but gift wrapping is, you know, oh, well, here's a really fun little two cones. Actually, I have three. So these stand vertically in the center of the table, kind of creating a centerpiece. And they're just cones that are stitched in the hoop flat as one piece. And then once that water soluble stabilizer is rinsed away, you just fold it over and hand tack that close. You can even glue it. You could tape it, whatever you decide. But aren't they fun? The stars are then tacked on. These are tiny little balls that I found in a craft store. Oh, they are so cute and just glued on individually. Of course, these snowflakes are uh, part of the embroidery design and you know, stitch right over that lace grid, that mesh, isn't that fun? 
really, really fun. I, I love them. Of course, they look better elevated, but you can't see that right now. Um, decorating packages is another important way to elevate a gift. So here are some embroidered earrings that were stitched for my sister. Well, let's not tell her, right? And I added a little pearl stud to it. No harm in that, right? Anchors it to her ear. And of course, we have King Star top and bottom, that beautiful gold. But then on the box, just a simple black box. And I used a little bit of double stick tape to add that um, Christmas tree that's been embroidered in the silver thread. Just lovely. I know. I think that's so cute. Really delicate. Really delicate. But you know, embroidered bows can be really a fun way to decorate a gift bag. Here's a brown paper gift bag. You know, these gift bags, you can get a dozen of these for at the dollar store. I'm just, they're pennies really and i just tacked this bow this is made in three pieces we have our flat piece in the back and then our actual bow and then a band that holds it all together and that's just tacked uh you know hands tacked on on the back and then i used a piece of double stick tape to put it in place and of course it doesn't have to go with the top of the bag you could you know adorn it in the center of the bag whatever style you know you so enjoy would work these are great gifts for Hanukkah, for weddings, for the holiday, for New Year's, whatever, you know, floats your boat. Really fun. And King Star Metallic can also make great gifts for the sewist on your, uh, on your list. Like here is a, a really cute wall hanging that can hang in a sewing room. So much fabric, but never enough thread, right? Many of us have been collecting thread for, I mean, fabric for years. And then I find, well, I use an awful lot of, of thread, so I never seem to have enough. But here we have our red, our beautiful gold, and then that silver. Now that's all in that King Star Quartet. Those three colors, I am missing the green, but I didn't really want this to be a holiday, um, you know, memento. I want this to hang in the sewing room all year round. So isn't that fun? Super fun. I love that. And it can also double as a really great accent on applique. So these beautiful embroidery designs are from our new software, which is a uh, patch and applique maker. And each of these elements, these large elements are a, a design that's in that software. And then I just added some of the decorative stitches that are also in that software to extend the hanging ribbon. That's what makes this little quilt block so exciting. It's not just the four applique balls and that individual snowflake. It's these vertical accents that connect it all together and really bring it to life. And of course, fabric selection is important. Um, I had this stripe fabric first. That was the whole thought of, you know, where am I going with this project? And so then I took a really good look at the colors that are in that stripe. And there is kind of a softer pink. So I knew that would be perfect for this large medallion in the center, which is a great accent to that red king star. And of course, who doesn't like the red and green, traditional red and green? And of course, those colors are always, you know, are in this stripe also. And then our kind of white uh, Christmas ball here with that green. Isn't the green lovely? I just love it. All of these pieces, I used a digital cutter to cut out, but I don't have to. You know, I could have cut, trimmed right in the hoop. You have all those options in Patch and Applique Maker software. Uh, but I chose to use my digital cutter. I really love this. This will make a great quilt block or a pillow. Um, I'm excited to get that finished. So let's take a look at the uh, King Star. We kind of looked a little bit like this last week when we, uh, well, a couple of weeks ago when we were looking at the fall metallic. But I just want to show you a bad way to use King Star. So these are beautiful embroidery designs, just wonderfully digitized, right? Tiny little run stitches, they are just beautiful. But you know, they don't really let the shine 
shine. They really don't because the stitches are so tiny. There's barely a glimpse of the shine and shimmer that you get when you use curvy satins or wider satins or even uh, motif fills. That's the kind of embroidery design that really lets the king star scream. So, you, you know, save a project like this for a king star 40 weight, metal uh, not metallic, but our traditional 40 weight. And that's a beautiful thread, right? It still is going to have a nice sheen because it's a polyester thread, but you're not going to go to the expense that you would with Kingstar. And here's those four colors that are in that holiday exquisite polyester quartet, right? That's $10. I mean, my goodness, you can't pass that up because, you know, X Christmas, you know, for the next six weeks, you're going to be doing a lot of stitching in these colors. And so I always make sure I have enough of these holiday colors in my sewing room so that I can uh, guarantee I'll get those projects done. And so let's take a look at one other way to decorate a box, and this is with just a big, beautiful bow. Same bow that I showed on the gift bags. Now it adorns a box, you know, an off-centered length of ribbon. Oh, really, very elegant, very elegant. Okay, so why don't we take a look at spooling our... Um, our King Star, because lots of people just can't believe how that spools so nicely. So here is our silver MS1. This is the uh, silver that comes with the King Star metallic. And I'm just going to show you how that puddles off. See how that puddles off? No kinking, just beautiful circular flow off of the spool. You don't have any hard turns, any kinks, nothing like that. And it just goes right back on. I can literally do that. I don't have to worry about it kinking as it goes through the machine. And then to wind it back or secure it onto the spool, I'm going to pull out a length and well, maybe a little bit more. And then I will hold on to it here and then I twist two, three, maybe four times. And then I take that circle of thread and pull it around the spool and pull the length. And now that's nice and anchored. And I would trim that off, that excess, just so that it doesn't you know, tangle all over. Now I don't have to worry about that unraveling. And it's easy to release when I wanna go put it on the machine. I literally just lift that tail, put the scissor blade in there and I can pull that apart without even trimming it. Isn't that great? No kinks. Is that amazing? I love that stuff. Oh, and you like my little thread box? Take a look inside. Let's take a look inside. This is what happens when you use your uh, dime mat on the cutting board. <laughs> you get little, little hooping mats. So I like to use them to line thread boxes because then my thread doesn't uh, you know, move. I can travel from home to the office with no problem, no damaging the threads. That's a good thing. All right. So I'm going to look at your questions and then I have some other fun samples to show you that I think you're really going to like. So let's see. Oh, Chris Yost, you use a thread net? You do that on Kingstar? I wonder why. I ne never have had to use a thread net on Kingstar. Now, I know that thread yet's mo thread <laughs> yet's thread nets give um, a, an embroiderer a lot of confidence. And, you know, are, they come with our machines for sure. They come with the multi-needle machines, all of that. But I, I don't use it. I've never really had to worry about that. But it's a good tip for those who are concerned. And let's see, Sharon Crowder, you've used Kingstar Thread to make note card designs on cardstock, even a somewhat dense design. It's amazing what that King Star will survive, right? If you remember a couple of weeks ago, I showed you a ribbon that I made, that I embroidered, a really uh, inexpensive ribbon that's like, you know, faux velvet. Boy, is that a stretch. It was really made of very nasty material. I couldn't believe it. I stitched Happy New Year. I stitched Hocus Pocus, Happy Halloween, you know, all in the same uh, ribbon with not one thread break. That's 
just awesome. And Ray, you've never used the thread nets either. Yeah, I don't either. Sometimes I will use a um, thread stand. It just sometimes, not always. And let's see, Risa, you've come close to cutting your mat, but you've caught yourself. That's a, that's good. You're lucky. You can like use duct tape on the wrong side of a hoop mat to piece it back together. But you know, I I just got another one because. Let's see. Oh, can you give us the discount on the thread again? We can. We'll do that. We'll run that at the bottom. There you go. So there's free shipping, and it is a great price today. Let me see. Oh, yeah. We, there we go. It's only $55.98 for those four spools, which is awesome. Isn't that great? And, oh, Sharon, you cut your hoop mat. Yep, that's okay. They're very inexpensive. Let's see. Oh, and Isabel Brian, you wrap a silicone peel around the spool for storage. That's that's a great idea. It's a great way to, to secure the end of your King Star. Yeah, there's lots of different ways that you can uh, make sure that, you know, just keep it in um, in control, right? That's the whole idea. Okay, let's see. I know we're so excited to show these fun ideas. And let's see, Charlotte, you used our poly patch twill to make patches for kids at the pediatric oncology ward. And you could do it even without a scan and cut. Well, my hat is off to you, Charlotte. That is wonderful work, a wonderful endeavor. I'd be interested to know what you put on those patches. Maybe you put hero, maybe you put superhero. Maybe you put, you know, a kind sentiment like you are loved, you are thought of. But, you know, tell us in the comments what you put on those patches. We'd love to hear that. Okay. Why don't we go back and take a look at some uh, fun projects that I did with our exquisite thread. Now, remember, if, I, if I'm... I'm going to finish this, right? And these were originally going to be uh, coasters that I would bind, cut them out, and then bind them. So if I'm going to do the whole collection, I am going to switch over to the uh, exquisite polyester 40 weight because uh, I know I'm going to get a beautiful finish in that and I won't be, you know, kind of wasting my King Star, right? So some other uh, exquisite projects that you could do with Exquisite or Kingstar, either one. So here we have a brown craft paper that wrapped a box. So if you are in a jam and you're out of wrapping paper, you most certainly can cut up a brown paper bag and wrap it with the, you know, no printing, right? The inside of the bag on the outside of the package, a little bit of baker's twine, and then a pretty ornament like this. So this is just a poinsettia that has been stitched with the polyester uh, exquisite 40 weight thread and then all these little jingle bells. I would add a ornament hanger to one end and then this doubles as a, not only a gift decoration, but also an ornament for the gift recipient. And then look at these fun little name tags, right? So if you have a lot of grandkids or just a big family and maybe everybody's getting, you know, one, gift that is the same all across the board. We often do that, right? Everybody's going to get a gift card or everybody's going to get a Christmas ornament, a, you know, specific Christmas ball or something. So here I just used lowercase initials and I used uh, just a brown craft label. And then I just strung that little ornament right onto the twine. And oh, I just think they're so cute. They really go a long way and it's adorable. Gift cards are, you know, who doesn't like a gift card, right? Here we have one from the container store. And um, this is an embroidered envelope. So again, this is with the King Star red and a beautiful white. And we stitch that on the water soluble stabilizer, wash it all the way. And then we, I did sew this element. So it's a, th a three-part design, the flap, the front, and the back. And then you just sat and stitch these two uh, edges and the bottom together to create the envelope. And then you have a really nice presentation of a gift card. Even if this was, you know, a $10 gift card, wouldn't it be special to hand that to someone? And maybe, you know, you'd like to do it in color. So here we have white. Now, if you do it this way, your bobbin, you can use regular bobbin thread um, because it's white. Here, I actually used red 
um, bobbin thread. You know, I stitched my 40 weight thread, used it in the bobbin. And, but here, you know, you could skimp a little bit, use a traditional bobbin weight thread, and then uh, your inside is, you know, gonna be fine, right? So same thing. And then, you know, that, these really fun ornaments, just decorate. These were plain little decorative pie tins that I purchased at a big box craft store. And, but I felt they needed some embellishment. They were just plain. So I added that snowflake to the um, inside and on the back, I you know, added a little round disc of the buffalo plaid, put the snowflake on top and super cute. I, you know, really a nice element to um, a simple gift. Where would we get the gift card designs or those, those envelopes, aren't they beautiful? So they are in my lace maker. So for those of you who have our lace software, that's an embroidery design that's in my lace maker software. And, and, and Susan Dugan, they are, uh, all of those designs that I showed you are all in my lace maker software. The earrings um, are in uh, my jewelry software, but not software, but my jewelry collection, but all those other little um, knickknacks are from the uh, My Lace Maker software, which is a very versatile software. You can do tons of fast projects in that. So let's see. Hi, Monica from King of Prussia. Nice to have you here. Nice to have you here. All right. So our special today is that Kingstar Metallic. And don't forget, while you're there, you could add this to your cart, which is the 40 weight exquisite. And it's 10 bucks for these four colors, which are the exact holiday colors that we all need. Silver, gold, red, and green. And that green is really pretty, really a luscious. I love it. Really nice. And they blend very well with the Kingstar Metallic. So don't be afraid to mix. Don't be afraid to mix for sure. We do have an exciting announcement. Many of you have been asking, do we sell individual spools of King Star thread on our website? And I'm happy to tell you that as of today, we do. So you can go to dzgns.com and not only can you buy the quartet, um, but you can also purchase each individual spool. So if you love the red or you love that russet, that dark orange or the purple, then you will be able to um, buy individual spools. And of course, if you contact your local retailer, if they carry it in their store, they are always going to have it at a better price than dime, unless it's our weekly special, like today's is the King Star. Um, holiday metallic. So we always encourage you to support your local retailer because without them, we wouldn't be here. Can you do freestanding lace with any other thread other, other than metallic? You sure can. Like um, this little pie tin, this is a freestanding lace and that was done with the exquisite 40 weight polyester thread, just traditional here, this spool. That's what it was done with. Not a metallic, just a regular 40 weight. So yeah, we use both, but when you want some shimmer and shine, you definitely will use uh, the King Star. And here, this little ornament was done, let me see if we can get him to stand up, was also done with traditional 40 weight embroidery thread, not metallic. Because I kind of figured, you know, the glass ball itself has so much shimmer and, and uh, shine that we didn't, I probably really didn't need the King Star on the inside, but isn't it fun? So in order to do this, you know, I put the, I stitched that sleigh on water soluble stabilizer and then washed that all away. And then this is kind of a large opening on the top, not that large, but wide enough. And then I thread monofilament thread on the sled. I just take a long length. That's what you see. Maybe you don't see it, but there's a length of thread here. And uh, that's what holds that sled in the ornament and standing vertical. So once I get that topper inside, you know, the topper inside, it is creating some pressure against the monofilament thread. So it will hold it in place. Isn't that cute? So fun. I know. 
And then here's another example of one of those, another pie tin. And this one was done completely in the um, poly, exquisite polyester thread, not the King Star. And so that has those trees that are really, you know, so red, green, and gold, right? Just like we like. And then the baker's twine adds another uh, detail, uh, kind of identifying, you know, the circle, putting the little emphasis on that. And you, I don't know if you can see it, but there is some like 3D snowflakes down the bottom that I just put some glue on the bottom and then sprinkled those snowflakes there and they stayed. Mm -hmm. Okay, so Monica has a question about the Bernina 790 and bought the 260, now Dime is not, okay. So Monica, I can explain to you what's happening. On that really large Bernina hoop that was made for the eight series, on the H series, you are able to use the entire width, the complete sewing field of that large 260 by 400 hoop. On the seven series of Bernina machines, you can use that hoop on your machine, but you will not be able to use the entire width. It's the same as a Bernina hoop. It doesn't have anything to do with the magnetism of our hoop. It's the limit of the pantograph on the seven series. So because we're not Bernina manufacturers, we have removed that um, seven series as on our compatibility chart. So if you have the hoop and it's working on your machine, you can use it on your machine, but just know on the seven series, you will not be able to use the entire width. We can't change the machine. So I hope that answers your question. Okay. Uh, yeah, you should always know that whatever the manufacturer's hoops do on your machine, the same will happen with our hoops. For instance, on our Bernina hoops, our hoops are rectangular. Bernina hoops are oval. The sewing field on a Bernina machine is oval. So even though our hoops are rectangular on, for Bernina, you cannot get to those corners. We cannot change the machine. That's built into the machine. The reason why our hoops are not oval is because magnets are square and we get a better hold on fabric with rectangles than ovals. Bernina is using a plastic hoop and they feel that's their, you know, uh, corporate decision to offer an oval hoop because they feel you get a more even stabilization around an oval hoop than you do a rectangle. I hope that helped. Let's see, where do you get the tiny little tins and glass that you, you know, at a big box craft store, like Joann's carries them, Hobby Lobby carries them. Um, so, you know, just check in those kind of places. You could probably also get them online. Yeah, you can probably also get them online. Yeah, the little trees and the twine look great. The, you know, Baker's twine. Oh man, what a great secret that is. That makes so much, so many decorations just look adorable just look adorable. Yeah, I like it. They're great accents. Okay. So next week, oh, you're welcome about the Bernina. I, you know, I wish I could just magically, you know, wave my wand and say, every Bernina machine, take our largest hoop with the entire sewing field in a rectangle. Yeah, but I can't do that. It's not my machine. Yeah. Okay. So next week we have a guest that's coming on. And I know many of you are always excited to join me for her. And that is Patricia Gates is coming next week from Pearly Gates. But before we take a look at that, let's see what's happened on the web with the Small Town Charms recently. And as you know, Small Town Charms are kind of coming to a close, right? We started last January with the quilt shop, the bake shop, the dress shop, the flower shop, the outdoor cafe, the town hall, the ice cream store and the gazebo. Um, September was the book nook and October, well, we don't have October in there, but October was the haunted house, which is right over here behind me. 
And then last week we did November, which was the pet supply store. So this is what we have found out there on the web by Lynn Newton Broadbent. Look what she's done. Isn't that great? She's been working with Sue Brown over at OML, and I think she's making fabulous progress. She's a newbie, I'm pretty sure. So good for her. Well done. And look at Luann McKinder Green Greenberg. Isn't that wonderful? She added pumpkins in the foreground. She's got some wreaths on the door. And she's got some hearts for around the name of her pet supplies. She called it for the love of pets. I love that. And she has, it's not really an address, but maybe she's considering an address, 1974 at the bottom. I know that that's the uh, year she was married. And she always makes a call out in all of her work to her beautiful husband. I love that. That's very touching. I love your, your fabric choices, your thread colors. Very well done, Luann. And Jennifer Alexander, she uh, just posted her Halloween, her October small town charm. Isn't that awesome? She used a polka dot fabric for the house and the roof. And she's got trick or treat up in the sky, bats and a pumpkin face, kind of a, a witch face in the foreground. Spider webs hanging off of those corner embellishments of the roof. I love that. Really, really fun. Marianne McCain, Dottie. Oh, this is awesome. So you added a street lamp. You have a cardinal on perched on the top of that. Love your fabric. So you decided to go with kind of a brick look. You, you selected a brick fabric. And I noticed that you eliminated the diagonal kind of diamond uh, design that fill stitch that I use to embellish my stone wall. So you just skip that because of your fabric. That was brilliant. That's exactly what you should do. You make it your own and you figure out what works, you know, for your project. She's got her uh, dachshunds in the foreground, right and left. Super fun. Really, really great. Okay. And then we have Renaud Paulson. She's got a welcome mat. I love the colors of her dog houses. Very well done. And her awning, her work is outstanding. It's just beautiful. Mm -hmm. Just beautiful. Okay. So a cave Lynch, Lynch French wants to know what's planned for 2022. Well, I have sketched out um, all 12 months, but I'd be interested in learning or hearing from you what you would like to see in 2022. You know, this all started in um, 2020 with the uh, dime doors, right? We did doors. And then last year, 2021, or this year, we did small town charm which was kind of a nod to small businesses across America and really across the planet because it's been such a challenging year for everyone with COVID. So uh, in 2022, I kind of thought we would explore more technique, and but I'd be really interested in hearing what you would like to see. So leave a comment. Tell me what you'd like to see happen in 2022 because I'm excited to start on a new one. To be truth, truthful, you know, by the time we get to November and December, you know, I'm like anxious to start a whole new series. So I, um, I hope you'll share in that enthusiasm. And for those of you who have not been participating, please do so now. All of those embroidery designs are still available over at dzgns.com. They are free. They come in two sizes, five by seven and seven by 12. And you should download them now because we will remove them in January and they will no longer be available. Um, so let's see. Uh, Lynette thinks famous buildings around the world. I like that. We, um, that was, we had a list of ideas. That was one of them. That was definitely one of them. Who makes exquisite thread? We make exquisite thread. We have a exclusive distribution uh, agreement with our thread manufacturer. And so we are the only manufacturers of exquisite thread. And we've been selling it for um, well, many years, you know, very uh, well. Dime has been selling it for, for uh, five years now, but um, 
it's been we purchased the exclusive rights so it's been exclusively available through us um, all these years so you can have confidence it's the same thread what about different churches marjorie yeah maybe you know um old covered bridges that's lovely gardens that's lovely it would be fun to do some kind of small banner for each month i like that a monthly garden scene uh and a mug rug linda uh whitaker so what size would you like these to be would you like them to be five by seven four by four tell me tell me love to hear that and sharon you say exquisite thread was your first embroidery thread and only oh i love to hear that yeah it's very dependable it is has a beautiful high sheen it's a very affordable thread and it's a dependable thread i mean it does not shred in the machine which can be so frustrating right you can spend big dollars on um, thread and just have nothing but shredding and boy is that aggravating it's, as you work through a project. So we really hope that you will um, post your small town charms on uh, social media using the hashtag dime so along. And we gather your images every week and share them with others. And you know, they don't have to only be the small town charm. If you're using Kingstar thread and you did have done a beautiful Kingstar project, we'd love to see that. Or just, uh, or, uh, any of our projects. We would love to see what you're doing. Something that you did in your uh, Snap Hoop Monster Hoop. We love that too. We love that too. So let's see, Vicki Watkin, Watkins, if you do techniques, perhaps it could fit in our door table display piece. Not a bad idea. Not a bad idea. And birdhouses would be awesome too. Well, I think, have you all seen my list? I think you've seen my list because all this stuff is on my list. <laughs> Like minds think, you know, what, what brilliant minds think alike or something like that. So, but we've, uh, you know, we're going to have a lot of fun in 2022. And my good friend Sue Brown has said she's going to continue hosting the Sew Along on the uh, Saturday after we reveal on the last Thursday of the month. Now, of course, next month, December's reveal is actually going to be on Tuesday, the 23rd, November 23rd, just so you know, because of Thanksgiving is actually the last Thursday of the month. So we're going to do it a couple of days ahead for sure. Mm -hmm. What is the $10 King Thread sale? Well, okay, Lori, so let's just, um, let's just clear that up. The King Star Thread, the four King Star Quartet is 53, 55.96. The $10 um, exquisite thread, this is the traditional polyester exquisite 40 weight thread. This quartet is $10. The, the Kingstar is much more expensive because it's um, metallic and there's more thread on there and, you know, lots of other reasons. Yeah. Uh huh. And is it crazy thinking it's nearly 2022? No, man, we've been thinking about 2022 since May, unfortunately. That's one thing that's really hard about running a business. You're always thinking so far ahead that you sometimes don't forget to enjoy the now, right? We're already jumping ahead. So, yeah, so all four spools. And I think when you add, if you add something to your cart, you will you will be asked, you know, you want to add this to your cart. That might be where you find it. So. Anyway, you'll enjoy. Well, next week, who's here? Who's here next week? We have Patricia Gates. And we're going to have so much fun. We're going to um, talk all about gift ideas and time for the holiday. And you know what she's going to be talking about, right? She is the Mylar queen. And her work is exquisite, just exquisite. I can't wait to see her, her work. And you know, I use that term exquisite, right? That's the name of our thread brand. Well, did you know that all of Purely Gates Embroidery Designs, their thread list is exquisite thread. She is a vast believer in the quality of our thread, and she has been listing that as the premier thread in her embroidery designs for the past dozen years, I imagine. So um, I'm so excited to have her back. We had a lot of fun last time she was here. 
and I'm sure next week will be no different. The week after that, we're going to have Joanne Banco back, and that'll be a lot of fun. She's going to talk a little bit more in depth about doing the jackets, her, um, you know, that beautiful collection that she has, Just Jackets with Dime. So that's on the 19th of November. So next week is uh, the 11th, and that's uh, Patricia Gates. The following week is Joanne Banco. The following week after that is a short week. So on November 23rd, we're going to be doing the small town charm. And then when we come back after that, we're going to take a look at um, uh, a Christmas quilt that I've been working on. And I think you all uh, enjoy seeing that. So it's going to be super fun. Let's see. And uh, and you've, you've ordered three times in 24 hours. I hope they put it all together. Well, it depends on what you order. You may not know this, but we have two warehouses. We have one in Dallas and one in North Carolina. And different product is stocked in the different warehouses. It's not like we have half of our inventory here and half of our inventory on the East Coast. You know, we have thread in North Carolina, hoops and placement tools here. So you may receive orders in two separate packages and that's not any fault of yours and it's not really any fault of ours either it's just that's how our product is inventoried so um you know if if you get a package and your thread's not in it like your hoops there but your thread's not no worry your thread's probably on its way from north carolina yeah and the ornament hanging design, uh, Sissy, that is from uh, my uh, my charms collection, which is on our website, dzgns.com. You can go to embroidery collections, and this is lace charms. Aren't they, aren't they adorable? So cute. And these little trees are also part of lace charms. Yes. So... Okay, well, it was super fun sharing this with you, and I hope you get started, right? You have to um, write your list and pre uh, figure out who's on it and what you're going to do for them. Get your supplies, schedule your time, and then get the job done. So until next week, take care and happy stitching, and thank you for joining me.